What's up, everybody, and cowabunga, dudes! I, as always, am Matt Tuna Turner. I don't want to welcome back to the channel today. I've got another in my retro video game review series uh, based on a franchise that, as a child, I, I really loved, and actually a franchise that I still quite enjoy to this very day. Uh, it's not one of my favorites anymore, but it's still up there. Uh, this is a game that I would join me on um, many, many, many road trips. But the point of the retro game series is to remove those rose tinted glasses and review the game as it would stand today. So, why don't I stop gabbing and why don't we get into it, gnarly guys? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan is a game released for the Game Boy in 1990, right at the beginning of Turtle Mania! And based on that very same cartoon that propelled the tubular mutant turtles into the consciousness of every child, myself included. Fall of the Foot Clan is your standard 2D action platformer. It's not quite a brawler like its NES counterparts, instead it's much more in the same vein as Mega Man or Super Mario Bros. You take control of one of the four turtles and go from platform to platform across a number of levels defeating the foot and other recognizable baddies, all while avoiding environmental traps. The difference here is where Mario and Mega Man have succeeded with great level design and hard puzzles, this game has kind of failed. The levels are incredibly easy and there isn't much to make them very difficult. The game systems do seem to progress, but since there are only five of them, they never really get super difficult. By the fifth level, there are lots of enemies they throw at you, which causes some serious frame rate slowdown, but these are also some of the most action-packed parts of the game. I find the game is also very liberal with its placement of the turtle's favorite food, pizza, which is used to regain health. As I mentioned earlier, there are five stages you'll traverse across that all feel like they've been ripped directly from the show. At the end, you'll fight a boss, and all your favorites are here. Bebop, Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, Shredder, and even Krang. It's great to have these bosses represented in the game, but they all have a pattern, and once you figure it out, they're very easy to beat. One thing that makes the boss fights a little more difficult is their hitboxes. They aren't always evident, but I found if you aim for the head, there's a good bet you'd do some damage. I was also hoping that as the levels went on, the bosses make it harder, or have a secondary form, or even have extra hit points, but they all just had five. I'm not gonna say who the final boss is, although you can probably guess, but what I will say is that it won't take you very long to get there. I was able to beat the game in 20 or 25 minutes. This is ridiculously short, even for a Game Boy game. This is great if you want something to play on a commute or in the back seat of a short road trip, but seriously, you could easily beat this sitting in LA traffic. The game does encourage multiple playthroughs by hiding secret areas randomly across its levels, but unless you stumble across them randomly or look them up online, you're not likely to find them. And when you do find them, they amount to nothing more than one of three bonus games. And these games aren't incredibly difficult. In one, you need to shoot a ball, kind of like skeet shooting. In another, you need to beat Krang by, uh, you can't see this, but I'm doing air quotes, deleting, throwing stars. And in the final one, you need to guess the number. This one seems to be broken, though. What's smaller than zero? God! There's not much that can be said about the controls in Fall of the Foot Clan. The Game Boy only has two buttons and a D-pad. You move back and forth with the D-pad, and that leaves one button to jump and another for attack. What is neat and helps add a little variety with the limited hardware is that when you jump or crouch, the turtles do something different than attack with their weapons. If you jump and attack, you do a jump kick, and if you crouch and attack, you throw a ninja star. This really helps save it from being a simple button masher. The story feels like it's ripped straight from the show. Shredder and Krang are up to their familiar tricks and kidnap everyone's favorite TV news reporter, April O'Neil. At this point, it's up to the turtles to save her. You'll battle your way out of the sewer, then chase the baddies on a busy highway until you make it all the way to the end, which is the Technodrome. As it should be. This is a very familiar story, which is both prototypical of action games and also standard for the radical turtle dudes. I say prototypical because how often are you tasked with saving some poor helpless woman? Once that's done though, the game ends on a cliffhanger. The graphics in this game are actually pretty good. The sprites are decently detailed, the enemies look as they should, and the turtles look like, well, 
turtles. Without the advantage of a full color screen though, each turtle kind of looks the same, only being differentiated by the weapons they hold. The animations also look pretty good. They aren't super varied, but they definitely complement the sprites. I found it interesting that you have the ability to head straight to the last level if you wanted. Of course, doing so, you miss out on some of the best parts of the game, including the real ending. While the level design isn't very inspired, the art and chiptunes actually are. Each level feels unique, from the sewers to hopping across cars and trucks and into the Technodrome. Sadly, my favorite stage was also the shortest. The music, similarly, is pretty good. There are four or five tracks that they seem to loop, but they do add to the atmosphere and also feel ripped from the show, especially the actual TV show theme. Before each stage, you get to choose one of the four turtles. Unless, of course, one of them has been, I'm doing air quotes again here, captured, which they do instead of dying in this game because nobody likes to see their favorite heroes die. The menu system itself is really straightforward. There's just level select and the ability to change the buttons. So you can change the attack button to B or A or however you want to map them. There's only two. But there's also a code you can input to get you to the bonus games right away. Speaking of codes, since this is a Konami game, the famous Konami code is back and you use it to restore your health to full any time you want. Now, as this is a retro game, you have to ask yourself, does a game from 1990 made for the Game Boy still hold up today? Well, I'm gonna say yes and no. It is designed for a portable, so it's incredibly short, but it's also incredibly easy. It's so easy that I wonder if it began its life as one of those, you know, Tiger Electronics LCD games that you used to see at grocery stores. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm just old. Especially if you look at this purely as a score attack game. It's not quite as simple, but it's really not a challenge, even at its hardest. Saving the helpless woman feels kind of lame in 2021. Yes, I know Mario still does it, so does Link, but it still feels played out, especially given the deep lore that Konami could have drawn from. I do recognize that they wanted something in line with the show. I know I've harped a lot about the ease of the game, but I guess that just means I wanted more of it. Fall of the Foot Clan isn't necessarily terrible, but it had a lot of potential and just fell short. It also feels kind of rushed, especially following hot on the heels of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game on the NES. There are two sequels on the Game Boy, and hopefully they're better. So, the final verdict for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan. For the gameplay, it's a standard 2D action platformer. You get to play as each turtle, However, it's incredibly short and very easy. So I gave it a seven. The controls, well, not really much I can say here. They're really simple. There's only two buttons, jump and attack. So, you know, I gave it a seven. The story, fairly standard. You know, the turtles have to save April from the clutches of Shredder and Krang because they're up to their dirty tricks again. However, it does end on a cliffhanger. I gave it a seven. For the presentation, this is actually the best part of the game for me. Each turtle had the same sprite, although you could tell them apart with the weapons they held. The chiptunes are pretty good. The levels, although easy, they do set themselves apart. Uh, the animations are pretty good, and you had the ability to go straight to the last level if you really wanted to. So I'm going to give the presentation an eight. And does it hold up today? It's kind of middle of the road. You know, it kind of feels like an LCD game. This is a hard one. Um, I'm going to give it a six, which brings the total for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan to a seven. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan. Um, when I was a kid, I enjoyed this game a lot more than I did as an adult. I actually found it to be quite more difficult as a child. So I guess when I was younger, I really sucked at video games. So, you know, at least I can put that on my resume. Improved at video games. Awesome. Well, if you like this, uh, please do gobble down that subscribe button as if it's a piece of anchovy pizza. Maybe throw a shuriken at that little bell to notify you the next time I upload more content. I do try and upload once a week, but I do it all on my own, so that doesn't always happen. Sometimes I miss a week. 
usually on Thursdays or Fridays I try and upload. And if you happen to have some brothers named after Renaissance artists, you know, let them know about the channel. Let's grow a community here. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you radical dudes in the next one. Thank you.